Hi, hope you're all doing well. It's Eric Amok of Worthy Forum. African Art Talks with Eric, and I'm so happy to come your way. I hope you're all doing well. It's Saturday as usual, and we talk about everything African art. I can't wait to share uh, who I've got with you today. Uh, today's guest is a female from Ghana, a very good friend, artist of mine. But before we do so, let me ask how your day has been. Just comment in the comment box and I'll give you a shout out. Let's know how your day have been. Uh, London's weather is great outside as I, I'm looking on the other side. That's where the window is. London's weather is really good. Uh, there was rain in the morning, but apart from that, everything else is keeping well. A week has gone by already since I brought you the last episode of African Art Talks with Eric. So chat in the comment box. The guest I'm bringing, if you have any questions for the guest, feel free to type in your comments as well and invite all your friends and loved ones to come and join us. As you well know, this program is about education, education, education. We bring you um, Africans art from Africa's perspective. So every artist that I bring on board is somebody who's got Africans uh, story at heart. So we do our paintings and our drawings from an African perspective. So I've got Pearl who says, hello. Hi, Pearl. Pearl says, hello, Eric, watching from East London. Pearl, thanks for joining. I hope you're doing so well. I love your videos. Anyone who hasn't seen Pearl's videos on YouTube, check out Pearl on YouTube. So Pearl Edu on YouTube, and she will give you some really good tips about marriage. <laughs> so thanks, Pearl. Great. So anybody else that joins, just say hello in the comments section, and I'll give you a good shout out. But as I was saying, this program talks about African art from an African perspective. So many a times when you either watch shows or read books or just check out African art, most at times the story is not being told by real Africans. But I set up this show to enable us to look at African art from the artist's perspective. So I'm going to just play the intro again whilst I invite my friends and I want you to do the same. Invite your friends to come join us so that we enjoy watching this show. Welcome once again to the show. Everyone who's joined me, good afternoon, wherever you are. And I'm going to look on Facebook just to see those who haven't commented. I will mention a few names and then we'll get on with the program. So let's see who has joined us on Facebook. And we will mention a few names whilst we actually carry on with the program. So let me go to my page on here and we'll see how that goes. Right, let's see. Okie dokie, right. I am live right here. A few comments in there. We've got 11 people joining. So all 11 of you, I want you to say hello in the comment section so I can mention your name. Otherwise, StreamYard doesn't show your name straight away. But let's do so. And in the meantime, as we normally do, oh, we've got Paul Victor Baby T. Hi, Paul. How are you doing? Okay, in the meantime, I'm just going to show you things about Edinkra symbols as we normally do. We spend the first few minutes talking about uh, Edinkra symbols. Edinkra symbols. We want to just go back and learn our culture. We want to just go back and understand the things we do as Africans. So I've got a few comments coming through. And uh, it's from Kwame Kodia. Kwame Kodia says hi. Hi, Kwame Kodia. Hope you're doing well. I have got Peter. Peter Say says hi as well. Uh, Enyonam Akon, hi. Enyonam, how are you doing? Enyonam says hi. And Kwame Kodia says, great job. Kwame Kodia, you're also doing a great job. And I know that Marie mentions your name a lot in your activism. So you're also doing so well. So great. There you go. Anybody else who hasn't commented, let us let me know actually where you tuned in from. And I will let others know where you are from as well. Great. 
Okay, so we are going to talk about the Adinkra symbols, and I'll give you a bit of background of what Adinkra symbols means and how it's being used these days. So you've got all these symbols, beautiful symbols from Africa that we can see right there, and they originate from the Akan people. There was a king called Nanakojajman Adinkra, so we get the name Adinkra from his name. And way back in 1810 to 1820, he was the king that originally started creating and designing these symbols. We've got about 146 of them now, but when he started, he started small and then employ other artisans to join in. And then eventually, this spread across the Akan people and they used them on pottery, on their stools, on so many things. Nowadays, we find them even on T-shirts and other things. And I'll, I would go on the internet, uh, type in Adinkra symbols to show you how it's being used. So later on, his son took over and he also designed more of these. His son was called Kodrajaman Adinkra and he actually designed more of these as well. But today I want us to look at just one of these symbols and talk about it. And the one I want us to focus on as I do every week, I just pick one of these 146 Adinkra symbols and I delve deep into it so that we understand what it means. This particular symbol on the left-hand side, beautifully designed, is called Binkabi. Binkabi. It means none should bite the other. None should bite the other. Uh, it's a symbol of peace and harmony. So this symbol cautions against provocations and strife. The image is based on two fish biting each other's tail. So as you can see, one fish turns around to bite the other on the other's tail. But we are saying that we should not. So that's the head of the fish right there and it's chasing the other to bite on the tail. The message here is that do not bite each other. We are not provoking each other. We are not going to uh, chastise each other when there's no cause for that reason. By all means, chastise when there's a reason for that, but do not provoke each other unnecessarily. So that is what the symbol means. And as I was saying, nowadays, when you go on the internet and you type in a Dinkra symbols, you'd find that it's being used in so many things, on so many items, T-shirt, jewelry, whatever, whatever. Let me share this one, for instance. So I just went on the internet and I typed in a Dinkra symbols. And look at what's come up. Let's just go on the internet right now. I'm just going to show you another one. Right. You can see so many items that this has been used on. So I'm just, right, there you go. Let's try another page. That one, okay. I'm just gonna share another screen. I had one screen up, but I'm just gonna share another screen for you to see what's going on. This one is called, right, a share screen again. And I'm going to choose this window. Right. So I can actually type in in real time. So and in cross symbols for apparel, you can see these T-shirts beautifully designed with that. You can see the Sankofa sign. People are using it on numerous uh, clothing. That one, for instance, has different, different symbols. Uh, let's look at this one. So if you click on that one, it loads with a whole new thing. This one is called Strength. And so many other things. People sell it on Etsy, for instance. Now let's look at jewelry. When you look at jewelry, so jewelry, right. Let's see what comes up. There have been craft symbols being used on so many things. This particular one is called Jinami. And Jinami, I think, is one of the most popular Adinkra symbols that you can see out there. So many other symbols, but it's used on beautiful jewelry from all around the world. What is the point that I'm trying to convey to you? The point that I'm trying to convey to you is that Ghana has got beautiful designs that dates back to the 1810s that is still being used as we speak. It's even getting more popular. 
getting even more popular. So we should not be afraid to go back to our heritage, to pick up what our forefathers used, to incorporate into what we do now. I've got Ribet. Ribet Jones says, good afternoon. Hi, Ribet. Hope you're doing well. Uh, Pell says, oh, wow, I didn't realize that these signs are like proverbs. Pell, every single Jinnabi sign has a proverb behind it. So that is the more reason why uh, the Ashantis or the Akans communicate with Jinnabi signs, because every single one of them has a proverb behind it, some wise words that they use to communicate. So yes, there you go. We learn by the day, isn't it? Rhea, Rhea says, nice. Rhea, so, hope you're doing well. And Rukaya Adamu says, good work. Thanks, Rukaya. Right, so let's carry on. I am going to uh, call today's guest. I think he's, she's delayed a little bit. And then we'll bring her on show to talk about her artworks, to talk about how she tells her African story. So let me play the advert whilst I call her. Okay, okay. So I just got in touch with her. Uh, she was caught up in traffic, but she's just got home now. She's connecting in the background and I'll bring her onto the show right now. Uh, but if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel where I show every single artist work, then now is the time for you to do so. I've got over 20 different artists that I have introduced so far or interviewed so far. And you can do the same. Just catch up uh, by just joining this YouTube channel. And I'll put the link there. That is the link right there at the bottom. And you can subscribe to my channel and also turn on the notification button so that every Saturday as I bring a different artist on board, you will be able to see them and follow through. So make a note of that YouTube channel and join my channel right now. Okay, thank you so much for subscribing to my channel. And I'm going to bring my guest on. But before then, let me read a bit of her bio. Her name is Nana Frema. So I'm going to read a bit of her bio from the notes I've taken. And I'll let her even tell her a bit more about herself. Right. So. Hi, Eric. I, I can't hear your voice now. So, so I think that you my can hear me. Can I, you hear I me can now? I can hear you now. 
Yes. Lovely, lovely. How are you doing? I'm blessed by God's grace. I know you're still on the road. You're trying to make it home, but that's okay. <laughs> it's, it's better for I you to show up than never. Yes, I have two minutes home, two more minutes. Two more minutes home, that's fine. We'll still talk till you get home. You know, this show is quite <laughs> informal and it's all about you and your artwork. So let's let's take it from there. Um, great, great, great. Jose. Hi. Hold on one minute, yeah. Great. So I hope you are not the one driving. I know you are not the one driving. So everyone watching no. Prima is not the one driving. <laughs> Just in case you're wondering why she's driving the truck, she's not the one driving. That's great. So tell us a bit about yourself, uh Frema. If everyone meets yourself and asks who you are, who is Frema? I know I gave a little bit of your bio, but I reserved a lot more so that you can tell us more about yourself. Okay. So I'm Nanajo, as Eric said. Um I studied um, art in Ganata College of Art and Design for three years. Um, I did um, art in secondary school in Adonis Senior High. Um, I completed the year 2015 in Ganata College of Art and Design. After Ganata, okay. I started with um, a small group called Hughes Fine Art with my few friends, like starting like room painting, designing, right. decorations etc for almost a year and then i got a job working in a gallery as an art creator at best first gallery okay. for three and a half years i remember so that I, 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 I remember i met you at bedford at some yeah. point isn't it yeah, yes. Yes, 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 yes so viewers the first time i met uh Frema was at bedford gallery when i went to visit my friend patrick william dodu and she was there she was the curator at that time <laughs> yes. <laughs> Great. And, and, um, and what well, happened afterwards? Sorry. So what happened something. after Bedford? Okay, so while I was at Bedford, I decided to top up my my educational background since Ganata was closed down my final year. Ganata right. was closed down in my final year. So at Blue Crest. Um but time and money didn't allow me so I had to defer for a year and then I came home and I decided to be a full-time artist. So oh, I'll be okay. a one-year full-time artist this December. Wow. <laughs> That's amazing. That is amazing. And I know you're not doing bad at all because I can see your webs and the development that have taken place all this while. Thank you. Great, great, great. So what really made you get into art as, as a subject area? Because I know that a lot of African parents don't encourage their kids to be full-time artists or even go and study art. Okay, for me, I actually didn't grow up with a gift, if I should think about it. Because when you asked me, as I was a kid, when you asked me, um, what do you want to be in future? I just wanted to be something like actually didn't know that was the gift i had so i when i went to ss i discovered my gift in ss oh, i was wow. told to the visual art class yes because the business class was full okay so in the second year people leave the school somehow and they you can join the class you want to join but i i got my interest there as class was going on for a year and then i picked up so it was kind of like a training over there and an interest so that's how I learned my art and I dis I discovered that I also have a hidden little art in me. So it's not like <laughs> I knew or I grew up with it. No, it was in my teens that I realized that I could also learn something oh, about it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's how I have been. Mm. Was there a particular teacher that or a mentor that really uh, guided you or you looked up to uh, whilst you were pursuing this interest? Oh, I don't say there was a mentor per se, but it was because I taught. Okay, let me just be 
clean so that some people will be encouraged to. I actually thought I was a little bit um, dumb because I wasn't yeah. really good as I went. I wasn't really good yeah. in English and spellings and other things. So yeah. when I was there, I thought it was something that was easier, even though it was difficult. It was easier yeah. to understand. Like my brain could process whatever I'm learning over yeah. there than the science and other topics. So it got my interest. Like it's something that I told my parents would be proud of if I put on all my efforts and if I did well, they will support. So Absolutely. I think that was what encouraged me as a young person. Now that, that's brilliant because um, a yeah. lot of people waste time in just trying to get you know good grades in other subjects that they are not naturally gifted with but you saw an area that you were gifted with and decided to pursue that is a good plan i think so that that was it so i That's... didn't have any mnt or anything okay so Frema says that she didn't have a, a mentee of some sort, but she saw an opportunity to develop herself in the area that she was gifted with. So she was really good at, you know, art, other subjects she struggled with, but knew yeah. that if she focused on the art, then that would be a good one. So that's what she focused on. Your line is cutting, your frame has frozen a little bit, but we will, if you can hear me, we can carry on. Can you hear me? Okay, so the internet in Ghana is playing up and she is uh, getting home. So hopefully when she gets home, it will be better, uh, but we will carry on anyway. Frema, can you hear me? Okay, so if you can hear me, what you can do is log out and join back in uh, to get a good reception. Otherwise, we will carry on with that. So I've got a comment from Pell that says, wow, that is bold. To go home and become a full-time artist. I tell you, Pell, it's not easy deciding to cross that bridge or even jumping uh, into that bold act of being a full-time artist because many African parents uh, think that there's no money in art or there's no good prospect in art. So they don't really encourage their kids. Or when, as far as I know, when I was growing up, a lot of parents would rather let you become an engineer or rather let you become a lawyer, a doctor, uh, all the other professions with the exception of becoming an artist because they thought art was just a hobby. But these days, these days we've come to know that art is a very important part of society. I mean, dating back to all the 1900s or even well before then, the time of the Egyptians, you know, art is what they use to record history. The events that happened in those days were recorded with art. That is why if you go to Egypt, for instance, and go on the tombs, you would actually go and see inscriptions that they made in those days, and that will help you understand how they used to live or whatever message they wanted to communicate. Same as I showed earlier on with the Dinkra symbols. These were symbols with proverbs behind them, and that is how they are you to communicate. So art is really, really important, and we can't ignore art in our society. I have got uh, Frema back, and I'm so excited to add her back to the show. So Frema, you are just coming back live on there. I can see that we've got a black screen on there, but I can see you in the background. Can you hear us? Okay, she's still connecting. Frema, can you hear us? Hello. Right. So when Fremont is ready, we vote no. Great. So as I was saying, it was through us that communication in the olden days were made. They drew stick men. They drew uh, with the, the, the minimum amount of tools that they had. Some of them even ground earth to form these colors. So they pick up stones, grind them into fine uh, powder, and use these to inscribe on walls. And that is the only way they could communicate. So art has always been very important in society and it still is. Nowadays, art is one of the most luxurious items that you can acquire. The more reason why 
I want African artists to tell their own story using art. And it's becoming more popular these days because artists from the continent of Africa are now under the spotlight again where their works are being exhibited in high places. They are being auctioned for great amounts. I've got great friends whose works are in the public domain, uh, friends like Amwakubwafo, like Kwesibotre, from all from Ghana. And we have a lot more from South Africa, from Kenya, from Uganda. The continent is booming with great artists. So if I bring these people on here, I want us to enjoy their stories, know the struggles they went through to get to where they are, and then follow suit. Right, let's try it again. Hi, Frema, how are you doing? I'm fine. I'm home now Good. and I'm feeling good. You're home now. Yay. <laughs> we can carry on. We can carry on. I know I've put pressure on you just to get this happening, but there you go. It has to happen. We have to hear your story. Great. So as we were saying, um, it was at Bedford that you decided to top up your course. Was it? Was that the case? Okay, so Prema is frozen. But Prema, can you hear me? Hello. So nowadays, I'm just going to set up a big tower in Ghana to make sure our internet works better. Uh, Prema, can you hear me? Okay, so whilst Prema is trying to connect, let me say hello to a few more people. Moses Nutepo has joined us. Hi, Moses. Hi, mate. We've got Mamiya C. Kato, who has joined as well. Uh, Samira Mohammed has also joined. Uh, right, let's keep joining. So if you join, just say hello in the comment box, and I'll say hello to you, and we will carry on from there. So Pell says that, yes, African art is becoming popular. Thank you for showcasing our people. It's a pleasure. I, I think we need to help each other to showcase what we've got in the continent because we've got some beautiful stories. I mean, stories that you... And, and these stories are from our day-to-day -day lives. We haven't just compiled a set of stories that we're trying to tell, but we've lit these stories. So from the things that our forefathers told us to what our fathers told us, our mothers told us, till now, we are living them in a day-by-day -day basis. You know, if you look at the way we dance, the way we sing, the way we carry ourselves, even our clothing in itself is a story to tell. The African cloth is a story to tell. If you look behind me, I'm currently, uh, currently working on a painting to tell the story of the cocoa from the story of chocolate from the, from the farmer all the way through to the consumer. So this is what I'm currently working on now. Uh, once we've got we've got Frema in the background, let's try it again. Let's try it again. Right. So Frema, can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Okay. So it takes a little bit for the line to join in, but Frema, let me let me see a thumbs up if you can see me or hear me. Yeah. Yes, I can hear okay. you. Great. So what we will do because of the internet is that we'll go straight into your artworks and then we will talk about each of your pieces uh, because of time. Yes. Let us put up your first pieces. So when I can you, hear you. Great. Can when you decided you. to go full time, um, how did it start? Did you start doing a lot of drawings or you went straight into painting? Can you hear me? Okay, so <laughs> I'll be very truthful to myself. When I yeah. was working in the gallery and then I got to meet a lot of artists when I go for exhibition, I started feeling a little depressed because I was right. asking myself, why, why did I stop painting? Yeah, I can hear you. That's right. So I'm saying that, um, can you hear me now? 
I can, yes. We heard the first part. So you got a bit depressed and you were like, why have you stopped painting? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes, so I was saying that um, I, I, yes, I was doing sketches, but what I was doing sketches, but what really gave me the more uh, we can hear you, you can carry on speaking. You, you can carry on. We can hear you. I can hear you. Oh, okay, Ca carry on. You can carry on. Okay, so I'm going to type in the private chat. If you can see the Breaking. comments, you can carry on. I don't know if it's the same speaking. from my end too. But when you talk, okay. I don't know if it's the same from my Hi, Eric. Sorry, viewers. We're having a bit of uh, connectivity issues from Ghana. But hey, we will carry on. Uh, let's hope that her internet gets better and better. And then we can carry on with the interview. Right. So if it doesn't work, I'll reschedule another uh, meeting for next week, making sure that her internet is sorted out. But if not, we will carry on. Uh, if she gets better at the connected connectivity, we'll carry on. But let me show you a bit of her work just to give you a flavor of what uh, she does. So she does typical African scenes. And I've showed her very early works. And I'll, I'll show what she's currently working on, but it would be nice for her to talk through it. And she is connected now. So let's try it one more time. Okay. So can you hear us right now? Yes, I can hear you now. Okay. So if you can talk us through this particular painting, uh, why did you paint this one? And what was the inspiration for it? From can you hear? Sure. Okay, so it's going to be a challenge today, I think, because of the internet, but I will continue showing the artworks. She joins, she'll talk us through each piece that she has done. And then I think I should reschedule uh, this meeting so that we get a very good internet connectivity for her to be able to tell us exactly what each piece means. But, you know, her works depict what she's going through and she actually communicates that through her paintings really, really well. Uh, that's another piece that she's got here. I would have loved for her to really talk us through these ones because she looks at it from uh, a, a mental point of view. So who, those who have mental challenges, she's able to communicate her work, to communicate what they're going through as well. These are further works about the human body. Portrait of herself on the right and a woman on the left. And then we've got her current works that she's currently working on, uh, and it's all to do with the hand. So it will be really good for us to get her on here. The other ones that I showed you earlier is called the hand statement, hand statement. And this is a series that she's working on. I can see a few comments in the background, but let's go through it. Pearl says, wow, her work is amazing. Her works are amazing. Thanks, Belle. 
and she continues to say, What a gift. I've also got Mami C Kato who's joined and is asking Edith Betty to join us here. Thanks, Mami C. Mami C is also calling Kafui Day to join us. <laughs> Thanks, Mami C. And then Mami C said, uh, Let's bring this up. Samira Mohammed, join us here. Great. So Mami C is soliciting for a lot of people to come and watch the program. Mami C, thanks for mobilizing people. I think the challenge from Ghana is the connectivity with the internet, but I will reschedule another call for her when she's got a really good internet connectivity so that she talked through her work. But in the meantime, as I said earlier on, if you want to see more of these interviews or the ones that I've done in the past, and I'll be showcasing, I'll be previewing an earlier one that I did uh, very shortly on this channel, then you can actually uh, join us on YouTube to see exactly what I have been showing on YouTube. So on YouTube, I've got over 20 different African artists that I have interviewed. And I'm going to put the link over there so that you can actually subscribe to the channel and be a part of it. African Art Movement. So if you click on that link or if you type in that link, YouTube user imap 75 that will allow you to be able to subscribe to the channel and also be a part of this conversation about African art. Any of you, if you know any African artists that you'd like me to interview as well, uh, reach me on here, inbox me, and definitely I will interview them as well because I'm trying to get the message out there to the rest of the world about the gifts and the talents that we have got in this continent, on this continent, beautiful artists on this continent telling our beautiful African stories. So let me know if you have an artist friend, if you know of an African artist or an artist of African descent from anywhere in the world, let me know and I will bring them on board to interview them as well. Great. So I'm going to choose an older video that I previewed earlier and I'll play it. So join me once again on this YouTube channel or on Facebook and then you see my earlier videos. But thank you for joining me on this particular one. Sorry about the internet connection challenges, but we will sort it out very, very soon. Thank you and God bless you. Bye for now.